Do we hold hands and help each other as we stumble and fall? Or do we turn our backs and hurry along with those on a roll? Do I share my plate with you, even though I'm not the one who stole your food? Do you give me shelter under your wing, when I am thrown out in the cold, by no fault of your own? Matters of the heart and spirit wrestle with those of the physical world, a world built on the illusion of separation. You, me, we, them. In the end, all of us become the earth that knows not black from brown, nor joy from sorrow, nor weak from strong. And yet, we live in bubbles of isolation, as though your and my victories and hardships are exclusive to each one, when the truth is that every breath we take ripples itself into the other. The air that spines its way inside your lungs is the same air that keeps me alive. The soul that keeps your heart beating is the same one that heals me when my heart breaks. Thank you. Uh, before I move on to the next one, I'll, I thought I'll, I will share in between the longer poems a few really short ones, just three or four lines, um, to kind of lighten the read. So here's one I really like and I would love to share it with you. I run into the wilderness, my heart open wide. I run into the wilderness, my heart open wide. Wild embraces wild. A numbness wraps itself around me. I curl up inside it like a caterpillar in a cocoon not waiting, not wanting to break free until I am certain I have wings to fly. Sitting alone by the sea, sitting alone by the sea, I wonder why this salty wetness on my cheeks. This next poem is called Having Tea with My Demons. And uh, it's inspired by the story of the Buddha having tea with Mara, the demon god that tempts him with illusions. And instead of fighting and struggling with Mara, Buddha invites Mara and has tea with Mara. So. having tea with my demons. I am controlled in so many moments of my life by demons that haunt me. I do not know how to escape their torture and be free. They are my own, and they are asking to be loved and welcomed into my home. Come, demons, sit with me and have some tea. Tell me your stories. And, and even if you scream them to me, I will listen without asking you to be quiet. I will sip from my cup and I will soak in your words. And I will embrace the feeling you feel as I taste the salt upon my cracked lips. And I will let you throw a tantrum and kick your mug and spill your tears. I will come to you and hold your hand and walk you to the garden where you can play and roll upon the wet grass and become dirty and wild and release your energy, the fuel that makes your blood boil. Come, dear demons, come to me. Sit with me now and have some tea. You belong to me. 
and I will take care of you and your insanity. It will be mine to love, and love it, I will. A couple of short ones now. Stardust falls upon my window where last night the moon had come. The conversations I have with the heavens are by far the best. At the breaking of dawn, light comes. At the breaking of dawn, light comes. So, at the breaking of heart. For me, it's just another street. For someone else, it's the road that takes them home. This next poem is called Rainbow in a Puddle. And uh, I really don't know where it came from. <laughs> but I enjoy, I enjoyed writing it. And I hope you enjoy listening to it. Rainbow in a puddle. Blue, green, violet, color my mind with strokes of genius. It's a dragon that comes alive within. The smoky fire breathes in me my destiny. Charcoal petals, soft and black, smear my face. The tears have long dried. Beautiful eyes dissolve into their own mystery. Where is the door or is there one? Maybe just a window with checkered curtains looking upon the meadows. Yellow sunlight pouring in into my coffee cup. I sip. I smile to think of all the joys that overflow and spill into my life. Sounds of laughter echo deep inside the well of wishful memories. Buckets and buckets of broken dreams. The world spins and with it my mind. This last poem is, um, I like to see it as a poem of hope, and it's called Lightness. Feather away the heaviness that burdens you. Let the hollowness, let the hollowness of birds' bones find itself in the fullness of your substance. Let wonder be the wind that lifts your wings and humility, the flutter that carries you forward and upward to a place that is beyond, yet right here, right now. The coming alive is in this moment whence the breath that comes and goes from the deepest part of you reaches the farthest edges of the rays of sun that pool into a space of moonless beams and silver linings touching the beautiful pink clouds that float upon the horizon of nothingness and serenade the coming and going of life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. It's very, very nice indeed. Great poem, great points. Professor Mohammed Hassan, may I please now ask you to tell us uh, something about yourself and your poetry. A little more about your poetry than yourself. Check, yeah. Um, at this age, I'm weak need weak heart and failing mind, if you don't mind, with the permission of the Their Excellencies, the retired judges, can I take the chair and speak? Uh, thank you. 
First of all, there are many people who are my friends, but I know by now, as uh, another retired judge, Justice Bhavru Khan said, all the time you were roaming in the street of Jaipur as a duplicate copy. We never knew that you have a heart and you have a rhyme with you. Uh, yes, it is a surprise. And uh, today, as I did earlier, I want to thank my dear friend Sunny Sebastian and of course my wife who pushed me to finish these notes into a book like this one. Uh, without their support, I don't think I would have been able to done it. As my professor in America said, you read enough, start right. So they said, you written enough, get it out. So anyway, the delivery was done and I don't know how the baby would be around you. Uh, there are 182 uh, uh, points. Introduction is also in verse, but that I won't be uh, reciting. Uh, Needle. First poem. God lives in my ambit. A warrior's sword. He decides to create. God lives in my ambit, a warrior's sword, he decides to create or kill, defend or expose. Don't go by my lean shape, size or weight, but reckon by my substance and skills and my omnipresence. I trace my ancestral thorns, beaks, hollowing tree trunks, weaving a tapestry of silk for tiny homes or treetops. I render sh shape and grace to all that makes life, to make jute hold grain, flowers bloom to my dance on Kashmiri shawl and kasar. Remember how careful you are holding me in a hand or teeth. I test your patience hiding in hay and I slip on floor or in quilt, you fear a friend at home. Hiding to give a terrible slip. Imagine how you tiptoe, like a Shiva in measured dance, terrifying all, fearing on prowl fanged tip. Together as twin sisters, Thimble and I, darning holes, fixing buttons, Weaving smiles and tears, relieving nightmares and dreams, I can tell age from agility by how a child and aged one holds, looks, aims and pulls through. A silk thread through my hole. Can he hold and aim, coordinate eyes and fingers, hold and thread? Doctors know what you need. Mishandle me, you bleed, you deathly Yet deftly you succeed. Tridents, spears and swords, my melancholic manifestations, syringes, nips and hose, my better selves in divine hand, still in noble roles. I am both noun and verb, your hand commands my role. A noun, I dutifully follow my handler's order, I pierce stitch, knit and mend, remove thorns from flesh and plant diamonds in nose and lobes. As a verb, I am at my venomous worst. Peace loses sleep, friends get estranged, hearts are broken, 
homes are divided, worlds ravaged, nations waged war. Next poem is, uh, these are not cobwebs. There are small things in our life and we trash them away and they lie in corner, but these are cobwebs. Uh, these are not cobwebs. These are not just cobwebs. Brooms can remove. These are not backyard bushes. We can cut and burn. These are not useless things we can throw in garbage bins. These are like nightmares that never leave. These are like lightning charred groves, trees turned into ashen stumps. These are like steel nails growing inside. These are like first slap and grave on a newly wet cheek, heart and mind. These are like a teenage bride's kick, a flowed goat's frantic flailing legs, silenced by butcher's knife. These are the molten lava words. Uh, these are the parting molten lava words of first love, shame on you. These are modern emerging trends, lit motifs that often hunt, like the handcuffed rebel Viet Cong facing a firing squad, like the parents in faded ferrans holding framed photos on chests of their disappearing, of their disappeared sons praying quietly on a snow coffined graves. These are not mere lines of hands. These are not mere kicks and slaps. These are not mere pyres and silent graves. These are not mere walls and roofs burnt in victims' presence. These are not mere fetus held on trident waved. Many worlds are entangled in them like a white pigeon's neck blood oozing, trapped in Chinese kite strings. <laughs> Plots with a plot. This is our garden lawn. The lawn was an orchard. The orchard was a jungle. Where lived beasts and savage clans. Beasts have become trophies. Savages, now severely tamed, have become machines and domestic things. Trees have become grasses and orchards glass houses. So these are plots within plot. Our daughter raised these plants. Then they seemed her only plants. Now she has a new home on the far off Pacific shore. Plants don't have feet, they have only hands. In distress they sway like orphans whose mother was taken away. Their leaves often tremble when a plenty manna sings. When they miss her in the night, they quietly cry. In the morning to cheer us up, they explode in smiles but their dewy tears they can hardly hide. Quilt. My great grandfather and mother shared the same caste gene pool. They plowed our ancestral land, raising cotton, mustard, and wheat. My grandfather an audacious jack, chasing a wild dream, jumped into a troubled dream, a stream. He went to high school, eloped with a Sikh. My father chose a new orbit, studied in Delhi. Dare devil that he was, married a pretty Muslim. They are all different, at times different, but fair, firm in convictions. They ate coarse meals, Fresh cotton balls, spun yarn, wove fine fabrics. They made this large wonderful wonder quilt, a heritage of how they lived. My mother bequeathed it 
with its medley of irregular pieces of rainbow themed cotton and silk, a collage of their times and tempers. Some are plain pieces, some have hand blocked prints, some are deeply dyed, and some in lotter, some are yet undecipherable. Someone patted the cotton swell, someone smoothened and stitched. In the cold, I wrap it around like my arms around my mother and sister, listening to them tell our homestead tales, sipping our farmhouse milk. Son, it's not a mere quilt, it's a tapestry, fabric of family history, made and remade, darned and washed in tears, sweat and blood. Thank you, Fasas. request for me to read a poem of his gratitude and it's a poem called Scissors. We shared so many things, sipping tea from kettle and cups, looking into the same mirror, walking in and out together, hand in hand through the same door. From the same window, yes, hand in hand, neck, breast to neck. We shared rains falling on window panes. We shared the blooms in our garden, the birds flying in the skies, how butterflies danced over petals, how hopes throbbed in our hearts. Lying hand in hand on golden dunes, Staring at the bejeweled sky, drifting moon and the north star, we imagined many a universe. We shared all that, believing we were part of them, yet radiant in our own cosmic glow. That was bliss. That was morning dew. Then, that was honey in our jar. Alas, sun rises, dew melts, bliss turns blister, spring becomes scorching summer, and autumn freezing zone, honey becomes hemlock, war erupts in wedlock. Staring at a drizzling, humongous cloud from separate bedroom windows now shed so many things like two blades of scissors between our thumbs and fingers sharpened by indifference and distrust hinged by rusted screw of a shared past My uh, privilege to call upon Makrant Paranjapi, Dr. Makrant Paranjapi, Professor Makrant Paranjapi. I've known Makrant since I came to college and uh, my first experience of his poems was my first year in college and I still remember that very well. Makrant, so happy to call you. You want him to read first? Okay. So, um, all right, Makran's choice that uh, Parikshit comes first because I, Parikshit being the host with me, I thought uh, we would give him the uh, final position. So, Parikshit, um, I, there's a huge temptation to introduce him, but I will not. Parikshit will introduce himself and again, a bit more than himself, his poetry. Thank you. 
thank you. I thank all of you for coming and gracing the occasion. This is a, a new initiative from Kavya to bring new talent to the front and mentor them and help them develop all national languages. And this is our one of our early steps. We are learning along the way, figuring things out. Uh, without further ado, um, I shall just read and see if that is an introduction. So these are Radha's Geet. Uh, Radha Ji is saying things to Krishna and uh, different moods, different flavors, different aspects of her personality come out. So she got upset with Sri Krishna. I, Krishna, I took your flute and threw it away. Somewhere in the woods unknown to you. And what did you do? You stood there and smiled. Giggled almost at my mischievous ways. As if you knew what I did. Then in a moment's impulse that is yet a blur, you reached forward suddenly and kissed me lip to lip. I have yet to regain that old self I knew as I, recover that partial bliss. Now you play the flute of this emptiness caught in a reed. The limbs hear your melody note by note. The trees and beasts whirl with star and moon. Move to the unheard silence I hold within. There is nowhere to go. But be the plaything of your music. What I took away from you with nonchalance, you turned into me. Maybe uh, this is a poem when she's less upset with Sri Krishna and uh, feels his absence. A moon ray stole. A moon ray stole through my window last night, played by the little idol on my altar, curled into a smile on my lips. All through the night it played by my side, keeping me adrift through dreams, the golden background of awareness. The moon through clouds, conspiring with a wink, hid time and again, but the moon ray stayed by me. It giggled and hid among shadows, peeked and lit my corner with mischief and surprise. And as I drifted slowly into our dance, gathered into glow and settled on my lids. This is more like a story of Sri Krishna playing with the gopis and with Radhaji hiding their clothes. And this is not a physical description, this is always as in our traditions, this is a metaphor. What Sri Krishna is doing is taking away the clothes that we cover ourselves with, not just the physical clothes, but the, all the other covers over our awareness under the waters of Yamuna. Under the waters of Yamuna, as I hide from your gaze and teasing laughter, you have stolen our garments and dare us retrieve them from you, O Mohan, golden veiled, and we huddle from your eyes, startled with the purity that demands the same. One by one, the gopis draped only in their love for you 
step out of the river and walk shyly to cover their shame. While you challenge their false nudity and clinging in your leela. And I, the last one, bury my head in the whiteness alone, defying your dare. As lungs explode without air in the crystalline stillness and limbs burst at the seams bare, I let the silver waves wrap my bewilderment and bliss when all of a sudden my foot slips. And in the rush of current sleeping, I am swallowed in a whirl, letting go of body and ego in love and stillness smothered, not free yet to love freely. Shy enough to drown and die, unable to give in to the lie. And you dive in as quickly to rescue your Radha and pull her out breathless and prone. What emerges from the waters, clinging in your embrace, robbed of all sheaths that cowered from your gaze, is what remains of love when all is taken away. This is from my older selection. There was a girl I loved once. So switching to from Shri Krishna and Radha Ji to the Divine Mother. And the Divine Mother has many forms, many Nama Rupa, many shapes. And we are trying to honor the Divine Mother who is present with us always and in everything that we are and we see. All universe is only a moment, and the moment is now. Our lives only a cross-section of an ancient flow from past to endless future, collapsing at the moment of attention. All we are is an instant. All we live is now. There is no time, but here. There is no space, but now. All is, is here, returning from mind to marrow, thought to feel, that ever-present still of awareness. In that still, neither you nor I are here. Even a moment's deep communion was enough to eliminate the two. The one who proclaimed, I love you, is no longer here. The grand finale of love is death. Where all is placed upon the altar, the lover and beloved too. All attainments gone, even the conceit of being one who adored, taking a sword to slash the image of you who were omniperson and the overflowing shunya rushes in to fill, submerge and fulfill. The last act of annihilation before the towering vision that eyes cannot measure beyond horizons that arms may not encircle. And as my frail arms struggle to grasp her globe of light Endless and void at the same time, she reached down to clasp. Body and mind cowering in awe that failed to bear her dazzle were raised by her. Words can only sketch in shades, their silence bringing out the light, often highlighting the same in various moods or perspectives against newer backgrounds or scales. Yet, all studies only outline the one portrait without image, thus describing the void that overflows from everywhere. I am described at the only, the last moment I disappear. There was a girl 
I loved once. It was Berikshit reading some of his poems. And Makran, are, are we ready? <laughs> right. so, shall I now invite Makran Paranjapi to tell us something about himself as a poet and about his poetry? Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parikshit. Thank you, fellow poets. Thank you, all of you, to have come here this morning on a Monday to listen to poetry. Poetry is, as we all know, a very special use of language. And all around us, you see language being distorted, destroyed by ideology, propaganda, advertising, what have you. And it's the poets who purify language once again. So I want to congratulate Parikshit Ji and his wonderful team for this initiative to provide a platform to poetry and to revive this in an age of not only social media, but at a time when nobody wants to read poetry. It doesn't pay, it's not fashionable. You can't get an advance of, you know, two crores for writing poetry like you might if you wrote uh, like Chetan Bhagat or my friend Amish uh, wrote a book of, uh, uh, you know, on uh, Shiva or Rama, you know, fantasy fiction. You'll get a lot of money, but for poetry you'll get nothing. So thank you. And uh, I was uh, asked by my dear friend Partho to say a few words about myself and my own journey as a poet. And uh, I want to start with the confession that uh, I wish I had done more for my muse uh, than I have. I feel I have neglected her, partly because of other pressing obligations and duties. But nevertheless, I believe she has been kind to me. And so I want to start in my own way by acknowledging that kindness and by offering this prayer to the muse. Remover of the darkness within, bolt of sheer lightning, I seek refuge in your radiant being. Aim, aim. Beholding such splendor, force irresistible, at last I cease faltering. Reem, reem. Hearkening to the mantra of bliss, from the very beginning of things have I yearned only for this. Clean, clean. Poussant and immense in flight in the darkness of the night, I delight in your secret name. Shreem, Shreem. Now, we all know that uh, words hide more than they reveal, and uh, what they reveal may be actually very little. And uh, Pato asked me to say a few words about my own kind of poems. I think I'm a poet of Sringara Rasa. But Sringara is so many things, as we know. It's not just uh, love or romantic love, as we understand it, but it's also pain tremendous pain that we experience when we care for somebody and uh, uh, we experience uh, the difficulties of bridging the gap between two souls or at times actually between two bodies. So I was uh, inspired by uh, Parikshit Ji to go back to an old poem I wrote. Uh, in fact, it comes from uh, a collection uh, called Playing the Dark God. And it was, in a way, a take on this whole Krishna myth. And not always pleasant or beautiful. So the prologue of that collection I'm going to offer you, it says, eventually, what else do men and women do with each other? They lie naked, side by side sometimes boldly, sometimes a little shy, and their bodies cry. And uh, later in the same uh, volume, I have a poem called Holy. And of course, you know, it's a pun. It's a trans-linguistic pun. 
हिंदी में हम जानते हैं होली एक बहुत बढ़िया हमारा त्यौहार है हम रंगों के साथ खेलते हैं अब आने वाली है होली कुछ महीनों में बट इट्स ऑल्सो होली इन इंग्लिश एनी हाउ सो रुक्मिनी The night before the festival, I touch her long distance. This telephone is my water pistol, and my words are in the soft shades of love. So let me douse you again with color, just as I first claimed kinship with you by the subtle magic of science, left by my appropriating body on yours. And now, over the years, look how it's I who have been dyed. in your color thank you thank you the second uh, little section of this poem is called color in the morning i stop at the crossroads and pick up the primary colors of life red blue and green from the street vendor at a rupee a fistful <coughs> they are going cheap three radha i color her cheek red she leaves her mark on my forehead in an impulsive gesture i bend low to touch her feet he's mad she says but her eyes are full of color satyabhama thank you for satyabhama She watches me bowing to Radha and later remarks with characteristic understatement you two do seem to be friends I dab her forehead with vermilion but she refuses to understand the implication you haven't colored me yet I remind her oh I haven't innocently she asks and she takes a pinch of green and leaves her jealous fingerprints on my face thank you this is the last ye akhri kadi hai is kavita ki it's called the end of color in the afternoon i wash my face change i take off the colored garments when by myself i prefer to be colorless